Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Monday, January 22nd, 9.19 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at Mayan Volcano in the Philippines, the lava fountain that was occurring around 36 hours ago, and a new eruption popped off around 12 hours ago that we'll, we will be covering. What you're looking at is cosmic ray flux heating the muons in the subsurface of the Earth, uh, creating an uptick in these high silica magma rich volcanoes. Now let's look at the current snowfall totals from Storm Jackson with an X as it moved across the country dumping more than a foot and a half of snow in some areas here in the Northwest. Let's go to a quick progression here. What, what we're gonna look at is the snow totals for Jackson here we can see over a foot of snow coming in, nine inches in the beginning, and then this is right now. We can see a new storm coming in on the west. I'll run it through. This is the next seven to ten days, bringing us to the end of January. And those of you in Canada that said there's no snow, well, hello. And there you go. Those are the snowfall totals from right now through February 1st, the next eight days. And you can see that if we draw a straight line across the U.S. here, everything north of there is going to be buried. 50% of it in significant levels, six or more inches. Here are several feet of snow, and the snow is not going to stop in this region. This is well above the four feet. These white areas, we're talking six to ten feet of snow by the end of February. Unfortunately, that's not getting down into the Sierras that far, but the Sierras are looking for a foot or two of snow up into the 24-inch range here in the greens. And that is good news for the West because the West is the best. Hello. Strong windstorm leaves 73,000 homes without power in British Columbia. We just looked why a powerful windstorm hit Canada, Canada's, Canada, Canada's British Columbia on Sunday, downing trees and powering top, toppling power lines. Let's talk about the Midwest. Significant winter storm brings heavy snow and ice to the Midwest. Big rigs everywhere. Very busy day. This is from uh, Jackson. Storm Jackson with an X. And you can see that center of circulation here around that low, 997 millibars. Moving up into New England as we speak. And a strong storm here. Look at this. Strong storm extending for thousands of miles all the way across Central America and up into North America here. This is the 1978 pattern, and we'll get to it. It has to do with total solar irradiance, and you can do storm prediction using uh, sunspots, and we'll get to that. Not only in British Columbia did they lose power because of this strong windstorm leaving 73,000 homes without power, but they had to shut down ski resorts because of record snowfall and high winds in British Columbia. Current temperatures, one. Some British Columbia ski hills received so much snow this weekend, they were actually forced to close. And that is a boom. And a big boom. That's an avalanche boom. There's more avalanche booms coming. Snowfall all weekend and overnight Sunday overwhelmed some of the mountains and making conditions unsafe. After more than 100 centimeters of snow fell at Mount Washington Ski Resort over a 24-hour period, the resort was forced to close on Sunday, and that is a hell of a boom. Dozens of people, including a scout troop, were stranded due to the conditions. Hmm. I wonder what's happening. Is there something that we could be looking at that might give us a clue to what's happening? I wonder if the past has anything to do with it. Is there anything historically in the past that happened that might tell us about the future? Now, this is coming out of Sweden. Snow depth sets new seasonal record. Now, I know it's winter, but these are records. 
Most of Sweden, apart from the very far south and the west coast, was covered in snow on Monday morning. But meteorologists advise snow lovers to enjoy it while it lasts because it's global warming everywhere, creating ice and record snow everywhere across the planet, including Sweden. New York Times heads up Davos, heads of state and CEOs in Davos, beware, six feet of snow in six days. We predicted this one week ago. I showed you the GFS model. I looked at the solar dynamics and we said that the Alps are going to receive record snow this week. <laughs> and that's a record snow blower. Heavy snow cuts off alpine towns in Switzerland and Austria. Tourists in the Swiss town of Zermatt for the second time in two weeks under the Matterhorn Matten Peak have been stranded. And this is dangerous because they've already had dangerous avalanche conditions on top of dangerous avalanche conditions. And that makes for double dangerous avalanche conditions and a double dangerous boom of avalanches. Whew. And that's a heads up. Thousands of people are stranded Monday morning in the Alps after heavy snowfall blocked train lines and roads from the town of Zermatt in Switzerland. And it's not going to stop. It's going to continue to snow for four more days. High-level avalanche warnings on Sunday forced local authorities to stop train services to Zermatt, leaving 9,000 more tourists marooned in the popular I'm an idiot and I'm going in the middle of the Grand Solar Minimum ski resorts. If they watched our channel, they wouldn't have gone because we said this is going to happen seven days ago. Tokyo hit by heaviest snow since 2014. Philippine volcano explodes. Villagers flee back to shelters. We watched the coverage. Huge column of ash shoots up in the sky during the eruption of Mayan Monday, January 22nd, today. The Philippines' most active volcano ejected a huge column of lava fragments, ash, and smoke in a thunderous explosion Monday, sending thousands of villagers back to evacuation centers and prompting a warning that the violent eruption may be imminent. Now, the warning zone has been elevated to four, rightfully so. Heavy ash fall, zero vis visibility, alerted Mayan volcano to four out of five. A powerful eruption that took place today produced a column of ash that rose 7.6 kilometers, right below the stratospheric boundary. And it was massive. And there's this awesome time lapse that we can look at. If you could just bear with me. Look at some of these pictures. Take a look at this, folks. And that is what five miles high above the surface of the planet looks like. You can see the standard clouds in the bottom 10,000 feet here. You can see it extending another 13,000 feet above into the upper reaches of the atmosphere. Now we have that Mayan footage here. Oh, I have no idea what this, this is. So we'll just get rid of that. <laughs> My bad. But this is coming out of uh, Yahoo Japan. No one else is going to be covering this, only our channel, because we're the only one that care this much. Plus we have embedded reporters in this area. So we're going to try this again, and I'm going to show you what's about to happen here. Eruptive uh, eruption alert level three at Kusatsu Shirane San Volcano. The eruption warning level has been raised to level three. Entrance regulations at Kusatsu Shirane San. Based on this footage here, I'll leave you links, but you won't be able to read it unless you have a translator. But let's real quick look at the Wikipedia on this Grand Solar Minimum Volcano. Mount Kusatsu Shirane-san um, has not been active since 2014 like many of the volcanoes that are awakening. 
uh, interesting note here. The largest of the lakes, Yugama, is an acidic turquoise-colored lake with rafts of yellow surf sulfur floating on its surface that may now blow into the stratosphere. Floating rafts of sulfur on the surface of one of the crater lakes. Now, the summit of this Kutsatsu Shirani volcano is located immediately north of the Asama volcano and consists of a series of over, overlapping pyroclastic cones. Let's see what Volcano Discovery has to say about it. They still had the alert at two moments ago. They haven't raised it. That's how f ahead of the game we are, guys. They don't, Volcano Discovery doesn't even know this has erupted. That's a heads up to Master Shannon for getting us that information over there from the other side of the globe. Let's look at the historic eruptions of Kusatsu. We're talking a huge eruptive period during the uh, centennial minimum here. A 1905-03-02-1900-1897 epoch. During the centennial minimum, this is high cosmic ray flux from the late 1800s through the early 1900s. So this is very sensitive to cosmic rays, and the cosmic rays are off the charts, folks. It started re-erupting recently in 89. It also erupted shortly after St. Helens during the beginning of the solar maximum. And there's historic eruptions in 1805. I know some of you hate that popping, but the noise must come through because 1805 must be driven home. It's in the heart of the Dalton minimum when all of the volcanoes globally were erupting, including eight volcanoes in Washington State and Oregon were all erupting at the same time in 1805. Eight volcanoes. Now, why is this happening? I don't have the graphic. It's happening because cosmic ray flux is high during solar minimums. As the solar activity wanes, the cosmic rays penetrate into the planet as cosmic rays wane. And the reason is when solar activity is high, let's have a quick solar primer. When the sun is shooting solar flares at us, the planet puts up a heavy defense system. The shields on the planet go up based on the activity on the sun. If the sun is shooting laser beams at us, the earth responds by putting up a thick shield. During times of solar minimum, the shield shields are down, so to speak. And we're going into a shields down time period with the magnetosphere waning, cosmic rays increasing, and it is a cocktail for volcanic disaster. That's why we're covering it, because we want to have this information for future generations. Now let's get to the nonsense. Cleaning up air pollution may strengthen global warming. New research is helping quantify just how big of a lie that actually is. And that is a nonsense boom. Not the boom of the day, because ship exhaust is responsible for stronger storms, more lightning out at sea. Not cosmic ray flux. Not the grand solar minimum. Ship exhaust. Which is pollution. And cleaning it up may strengthen global warming. You live in a world of insane nonsense. Please throw your TV out the window. Here's the truth. Global oceans cool off now colder three years than three years ago. This is the HAD SST3 monthly temps. It doesn't get any more real than these temperatures. This is coming from the satellites. And here you can clearly see that since 2015, ocean temperatures are dropping. That is because of the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, the Pacific oscillation dropping off, the solar activity dropping off. <laughs> uh, here's 2015. Here's the downward trend. Quick seismic update. The KP hasn't uh, been at two or three. There's been no major activity, pretty seismically standard. We have lots of mid-ocean ridge activity here, 
here, here, Pacific rise. So the earth may be swelling. Let's talk about solar cycles and sunspots. This is the current data to the end of 2017, the beginning of 2018. You can see the huge drop down after this solar uh, big flare event we had in the middle of the year there. But we're down to lowers at the solar minimum and dropping off. Now, why is this important? It's important when you predict weather because the F 10.7 centimeter radio flux progression is a great proxy for sunspots and an even better proxy for predicting weather. Record snowfalls in North America occurred in 09 and 10 when the F 10.7 centimeter radio flux progression showed a level around 70. 68. And at the same time, the sunspots were at near zero. And I believe that as we get into 2018 here, January, February, March, sunspots are going to be at near zero as predicted. And the F 10.7 centimeter flux should fall down here into the 65 range. It's predicted to stay around 70 for the next few weeks but it will dip into the 69 range. This is the range when record snow events occur in North America and in the Northern Hemisphere historically based on 10.7 centimeter radio flux only. And I think that that's the key to predicting atmospheric compression events. So my prediction is that February and March are going to be amazing for our weather coverage on the channel because the F 10.7 centimeter radio flux progression should be down in the 68 range and the sunspots should be in the zero range and that's when record snows have happened in the northern hemisphere in 09 and 10 historically that is how you predict weather now if you try to get any data from the government unfortunately <laughs> the government is still shut down according to the websites. And that is a grand solar minimum boom. We're not shut down. We show up every day, no matter how we feel or what we've done, no matter what we've accomplished, the failures, the successes. And we do it because proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in the oncoming grand solar minimum. Scientists around the world, there are hundreds, now thousands, joining our ranks that are warning the public of the oncoming cold. The collapse of the empire and the shutdown of the system, you know it. Technology will not save you. It may happen in six months. It may happen in six years. Wouldn't you like to be prepared? If you want to know about more about preparedness, Join us on Thursday, February 1st from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Revolution Radio when ADAPT 2030, the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, and Ice Age Farmer perform a two-hour roundtable discussion on the grand solar minimum. What is the problem and what is the solution? The first hour, we will discuss the problems associated with the grand solar minimum. And what I mean by that is the historical data and what we can glean from the past and what might happen in the future. And now these are three smart fellas, David, David, and Christian. <clears throat> and together, I think we can uncover the important keys to what the problems may be. Now, the second hour, for those that you stay with us, will be a discussion on the solutions to combat the hardships associated with the coming cold. Now, this might be solar flux from the sun. This could be a, a financial collapse, a massive geologic catastrophe. It could be a nuclear war. There are many options. We'll discuss them all. And we'll be sharing the live stream link shortly with the public. And don't be afraid if you miss the radio program because each of our channels is going to have coverage of that talk in our own way with our own video and our own coverage, our own graphics, so that you can watch it again and again and share it with the people you love. 
Guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do so now. Thanks for watching. Times are changing. Be safe. Boom.